Okay, Alpine JS verse stimulus. First of all, it's great that there's actually two choices in JavaScript sprinkling libraries. That is, hopefully there's, there's more. And uh, now these two, uh, I, I guess stimulus would be like, uh, like the, the, the pioneer maybe, um, or it just des has more notoriety. And Alpine.js um, came out not too long ago. Hmm, let's see, five months ago or so. You're looking at the initial commit. And I got exposure through Alpine. It's used in Tailwind UI. So uh, I'm going to be going over just a little bit of a drop down. Here you can see in Tailwind UI. This is run by, by Alpine. Uh, you can't see it in the preview code. But if you go in and inspect, you will see the, uh, the Alpine markup. Now, Al Alpine, I would say, is sort of like hyper-declarative compared to stimulus. Stimulus assumes you're going to have a back-end JavaScript file handling class handling behavior. Alpine, you can put all your behavior right in the markup. So that's why I'll say it's hyper-declarative. It's going to have more directives because of that, more markup stuff, of course, handling actions and behaviors. It's going, they both have magic uh, properties going on. You, I sh you can put, uh, you can call JavaScript, like here's not in a file or a controller, but you can call Alpine code as well from like the markup. Okay, so you don't have to put all the behavior in the markup. Let me go over that uh, drop down I just showed. Here is the actual here. Here's what that drop down from Tailwind will look like. It actually has more um, than uh, I'm speaking of. Uh, there's a drop down example here. Uh, this is really nice. I mean, it is really nice to have this little amount of code. Uh, it is in reality more because it has animation added to it. Now I have the the Alpine code okay, commented out. I have the stimulus code right here. That's what's running it right now. Uh, I did add, here's the actual controller and stimulus. You can see See, it's 49 lines, a lot more than the code in Alpine. However, there's a little more going on uh, here, of course. I hope there is for 49 lines. But, um, yeah, just quickly, here's the, the code um, where it starts in, in this drop-down example. It starts, like, here with the actual clicking on the avatar. And uh, you put this, they have an idea of data controller and stimulus. I'm calling it dropdowns dash dash simple. That's because I'm putting it in a dropdowns directory. If you look at the very bottom um, of the screen here, I have uh, apps, app, job, JavaScript controllers, dropdown, simple dash controller. That's the naming convention used. I'm namespacing it because I want to keep my JavaScript stuff in some different directories. Okay, so if you name, if you do this dash dash, that's, na that's namespacing in Stimulus. I am also using Stimulus 2.0. Okay, um, and I have a video on that. It's wor worth noting because here is a uh, data API from Stimulus, um, some taken from Stimulus 2.0, new data API. And uh, here I'm marking the, the dropdown initially is invisible. Okay. So Alpine has this idea of click away on, on the main, on the main HTML code has an X data there. You can see uh, when you click, I'm here at the button code now where you're clicking the avatar. It has a click open uses the at sign. Stimulus uses a uh, 
data action in the markup and it's got click, drop downs, simple, toggle. So I'm calling a toggle method within the simple controller. You see that you have to declare um, always the controller. So if you are using the namespacing, it gets a little long. It's okay, I think, because you at least know where it is. And here I have a click away. So if you click away from the menu, similar to the click, click away that's uh, up there. Now here you have the, some of the look of the how verbose Alpine can be. Now this has some advantages too, I should say, because a designer can, can hack the animation code. So, um, however, I don't know how useful it is, I, or I, it would be my opinion that putting animation in the markup is not something in a web application I'm going to do regularly. And I should say my opinions now are going to come, I'm going to do this comparison, I'll give the opinions, are going to be come, come around, I should give the context about making web applications. And um, I think animation code is going to get consolidated in a single spot, you're going to have the, you know, like a, a fade animation on a drop down menu, I think it's going to be like one thing. I don't know if you're going to want to dial in and have it in the markup like this, though it's interesting that it is in the markup. And uh, yeah, I'm also to start getting into some opinions before this gets too long winded. And I, do, I don't mean it to be like a direct, like tech comparison. Um, but I'm going to come down on stimulus just principally because it's opinionated. And I think that's in a web application context that is going to be like very important. Like having a convention over configuration in this JavaScript sprinkling land is very important. And what I mean is that, let's just go to their simplistic homepage example, which is very simplistic, but this assumption that you're always gonna have behavior in a JavaScript file I agree with and I think 98% of the time that is what's going to happen like that's what happens and what you want it's not hard at all for JavaScript front end code to get really big now I showed that example that I already have 49 lines and you know more complex examples you're going to have multiple files and uh, importing in other module code from JavaScript to handle certain behavior. And uh, having that in one place is how I think it's best, meaning having it in a file, a dedicated file, okay. And it's good to have that convention for a team too, especially in a team. But even when you're working by yourself, like just naming it there's really no thought in naming it either because we're going to we're going to name this component. We're going to call it hello, the control hello. So we know to call it hello dash controller. That's good. I'm not thinking the team's not thinking about what to call the JS file. You don't even have to control the class name the class either. That's nice too. Um, even with Alpine allowing you to do that, it's not encouraged. So there's no opinion here. Like the team could stick it into a function uh, or not. Maybe it'll just go right in the markup, all the behavior. Like that would look bad if you had a lot of behavior in the markup. But then what do you call the file? Should I stick this function in an existing file? Um, there's no opinions here. So it's going to lead to, in a, in a web application, it's going to lead to probably bad things unless you have a, 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 a strong style sheet or like, hey, we put all the Alpine code in a JavaScript file, name this, but you get those opinions for free at stimu with Stimulus. And I think it's as simple as that. Like, that is it to me. That's why I will be going with Stimulus is like, for that reason, I should say there's a second reason too. And in any of these 
um, libraries you're going to adopt in JavaScript. The churn and, and burn is just been enormous. Like, stu- like you thought you were doing great with Backbone and it's totally extinct. Um, I, I mean, how many can we go through through like that? Uh, Angular 1 code versus, um, uh, you know, uh, what was that library that Microsoft used a lot too? It was kind of like Angular that was kind of popular. Um, whatever. I mean, you can just go. You can go into other rich application frameworks like like Flash and, and XAML, a Silverlight. Um, you know, the front end churn and burn is a lot. Uh, which one is going to be around that you can you know maybe rely on in um, in four or five years is a big decision when you're doing a minimal viable product uh, or anything uh, you're doing is like. Um, and the fact that Stimulus is backed by Basecamp and they're using it in their stuff, that's a pretty big deal for pulling the trigger uh, versus Alpine. Um, I mean, I think it's like it's good that you could still make something like Alpine and have it like it has been adopted by Tailwind. And we, and we should it's worth mentioning that Tailwind is not backed by some big name. So that's great that that can still live and survive, and I hope Alpine does, and I hope many do, and I'm glad there's choice. However, um, you know, React would be nowhere if it wasn't for Facebook. Angular would be nowhere if it wasn't for Google. So that's in the mix too, and that's something you have to think about, like when you're going to adopt a um, a library. Now, thankfully, both these libraries are going to be much more lightweight because they're sprinkling stuff. But nevertheless, you know, you don't want to have your stuff extinct. Um, you don't want to have something that other developers aren't going to know. Uh, Stimulus is caught on pretty decently and again, is, and, and is backed uh, by Basecamp. So it's like, I think there you go. It's like, it's more opinionated. It's got some solid backing if, and Again, in the context, if you're doing a web application of that scale, that size, um, yeah, I, I would go for Stimulus JS. So uh, get out there and do server-side rendering, rendering <laughs> and sprinkle your HTML with JavaScript. I think that's the way to go. So uh, thanks for watching.